Hey, welcome to the channel where we show you how to put some prep in your step. We're continuing our series on the Tableau prep templates today, and we're talking about the radial bar chart created by Tuan Huang. So, uh, you know, I've used a radial bar chart before. There are some cases where I could see you maybe wanting to use one. It's not best practice, wouldn't recommend it in most cases. But what I do know is, you know, creating the radial bar chart will help you understand just how Tableau works. Um, it'll help you to understand some of the table calculations and things like that. So, uh, you know, in my opinion, charts like this are good to create to really help break that barrier and, and increase that understanding of how Tableau is working and how you can make it do what you want it to do. You know, they can also be fun to create and for certain vizs, infographics type of uh, visuals, they can be effective. Um, but when you start layering some of the circles, you're not really making a good comparison. You're working harder to make those comparisons. Um, but again, so they're fun to create. People create them all the time. And so this will just make it easier for you to do the data preparation part of that. So let's dive into it. So I've connected to the Superstore data set. And what we need to do is we need to get our data in a structure similar to this. So in uh, Tuan's original blog post and tutorial, this is the way the data is structured. So there's basically two rows for every data point and the path is what's different here. Um, now, originally Tuan uses binning to create the densification, but we're gonna go ahead and do that using our dynamic scaffolding that I like to do all the time. Um, and so instead of us just having two rows for each value, we're gonna have the full 270 rows for each value. And the reason why we're do going to 270 is because if we take a look at the radial bar chart, this is the template we're gonna be plugging into. And so the highest value in your bar chart is going in around the circle to 270 degrees. And then every th other value is scaled down from on that one to 270 scale in relation to that maximum value. So what we're gonna do, uh, first thing we're gonna do is pull in our order sheet and then from here, since we're doing densification, we're creating um, rows for each value. We're gonna go ahead and insert the uh, dynamic scaffold steps that I've created in the past. Now, um, you know, I've got videos on how to do this. I've done this multiple times, pretty much in every uh, template that I've done so far, I've used one of these. Um, so I'll post the links to there, but uh, my my steps here i just have them saved so i can plug them in real quick and i'm going to change some of the values so i'm going to come in here um, and i'm going to change these because i don't i want to change the name of them so instead of scaffold start and scaffold end it's going to be path and i'm going to use this just to make it easier when i pivot them so my i need points from one and 270 And so there we go, we've got path one, path 270. Um, and then I'm gonna remove everything else. And so I only need those two fields. So again, created one field called path start with the value of one, created one called path in with the value of 270 and kept only those two fields. Now what those do is they create a value for every row in my data set, but I only need one row with those two values. And so I'm gonna add an aggregate step here and group both of those values because that's gonna return every unique grouping of values, but I only have one grouping of values, just those two, so I get one row in return. Uh, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pivot those using a wildcard pivot on path. And so that's gonna give me a column called path um, with those two values in it. And I removed the automatically generated pivot names field. Last, what I'm gonna do is um, add new rows on that field, on the path field. And it's gonna update the existing field and increments of one. And so this is gonna generate my uh, 270 rows here, which is exactly what we need. Then all I did was I added a field called join with a value of one. That way I can join it back to my main table here in a minute. So now that we've done that, um, we can go through the process of starting to identify what we're gonna use and uh, modifying that to fit into our radial. So. Um, again, this can work with really any data set, um, and that's why I like to use the sample Superstore data set. Um, but what we're going to do first is we're going to remove some fields. And so if I look back at this circle, 
um, or this radio, when you look at it, you have to identify what are the categories that I want the radio to be broken up by and what value am I charting around the circle? And so here I chose subcategory and then this uh, percentage is percent of total sales. So in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find subcategory and sales and I'm gonna keep only these fields, okay? I'm gonna add another step and we'll call this rename field. And so in the original template, uh, this is called name and this is called value and so We're gonna change those because in order to fit in our um, Workbook template, we just want to make those names the same. So now we've got our full data set. We've got um, Our dimension we've got our value, but we need to aggregate these now up to um, the dimension so we're gonna add an aggregate step and we're gonna drag in name and value so that just aggregates everything up to those uh, categories or those subcategories. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a percent of total. So I'm gonna add a clean step here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is create a total value field. And we're gonna use an LOD, so we're gonna say fixed sum of value. So it's just fixed across the data set. what's the sum of the value. So that's gonna give me the total repeated across my rows. And then what I can do here is replace my value. And so I'm gonna just create a new calculation called value. And I'm gonna say value divided by total value. And I'm gonna multiply that by 100. And so this is gonna give me my percent of total. And it's gonna replace that calculation because I'm gonna remove it anyways. So there is my percent of total. And then I'm gonna go ahead and come here, remove this field. And then last, create one field, call it join, with the value of one. And so here is my original data set, right? I've got each subcategory and what the percent of total sales is in that subcategory. And this is going to join back to my uh, scaffold. And so each of these rows is going to expand into 270 rows. So when I join this to here, it's gonna join on that field and you can see uh, originally I had 17 rows, but each of those rows is multiplied by 270, and that gives me my uh, expanded and densified data set. And so in this step, I'm just gonna remove the two join fields, because I don't need those anymore. And then I'm going to output my data set. Okay, and I'm gonna call this radial chart dash YT, um, and that, there we go. So I'm gonna run my flow, created it, and done. So there's the prep flow to get the data and the structure that we needed to. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to come to my workbook template and go to a sheet. I'm gonna add a new data source, which is gonna be the one that we just output, this radial chart dash YT. I'm gonna go back to my sheet and I'm going to replace the data source so place it with that dash yt extract and there you go done everything copied over all of these calculations copied over and there we go and so uh, this workbook um, it's going to be in the google drive in the link that's in the description um, the calculations how it works um, all of that is in tuan's original blog so if you want to know those details go ahead and check that out um, and I'm just, again, I'm just providing the workbook uh, just with those calculations already pre-built in it so you can do an easy um, plug-in, replace data source, and you're good to go. Again, I, I wouldn't recommend this in most cases, but it can be fun to create. You can um, show all of the grid lines to really understand how things are being plotted around the circle. You can take a look at the table calculations, how they're set. Um, and, and really understand and, and start to break that mold of if I want to do something in Tableau that's not out of the box, how do I mold the graph itself to do that? Um, and there's a lot of resources on understanding that better. Um, so, you know, again, using the sample Superstore data set is just to show that this can be done with any data set. Um, you can build this out along with the video if you want to, or um, you can use the pre-built template that I already have in the Google Drive and just plug in your data, choose your columns, do some renaming, um, and you're good to go. A lot of that work is done for you. So 
Um, if there's any specific uh, templates that you're wanting to see, let me know, give me some feedback. I hope you're able to find some use out of these and I'll see you in the next one.